battles to be fought. Treasures unknown. Starting out, Cobra TV is asking, because there's been, the way you guys have worded it has kind of bounced back and forth. And so he's looking for a simple clarification. Is this a universe that you're building for your game, or is it just one galaxy? It's a universe. Why do you um, make that distinction? It's it's actually uh, Alex, who works here, who changed the text for some reason on our, um, on our website to say <laughs> a... Uh, an infinite galaxy rather than infinite universe. I don't really know why he did that, but it caused some sort of like vague controversy. Uh, but it's, it's a universe. People don't seem to know the difference. We have joked that since people picked up on that, that we were going to every week just make it a little bit smaller. You know, so like next week we'd just say solar system. <laughs> we go to be like planet and then like small house. <laughs> So, but eventually, just like one level. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the you know the mystery and the glowing areas that's towards the center of the galaxy. So you can't leave that galaxy. So why call it a universe then? Well, let's let's not uh, spoil things for people. Uh, you start out in a same galaxy as everyone else. Okay. Um, when you begin, but. Uh, there are, we've said before, there is more than one galaxy. Interesting. Okay. Uh, moving on. Alan says, uh, it's been said that your first ship has terrible range. I assume this is just for jumps. Could you potentially manually fly to new solar systems? Um, yes, uh, but nobody's actually done it yet. It takes like an inordinate amount of time, like a really, really long time. Are we talking years? Uh, I don't actually know. It's a huge distance uh it depends on the star system some are quite close together but still 
you know, a ridiculous distance compared to how far planets are apart from each other. So none of us have taken the time. Uh, we could probably work out what the average is. Sure. Uh, but I like the idea of just releasing it and some somebody somebody will try it. Gotcha, gotcha. Like the problem is if you head in the wrong you're you're aiming for quite a small spot in the <laughs> overall scale of space. <laughs> so if you head in the wrong direction, you will just you know, which ninety nine percent of the directions in a three D space are the wrong direction towards the closest <laughs> star. You will just go for for a very, very long time. So <laughs> that's why we haven't done it. Gotcha. But it does work. Sure, sure. It's W. Kui Chen is wondering, will there be a favorites list of planets? Because he'd hate to find a beautiful planet and then just lose track of it completely. Uh, yeah, we're going to have that galactic map that we showed for a little bit. We'll have like waypoints and stuff that you would kind of expect with a map. There's also a mini map for the galactic map that we haven't shown yet. Huh. How does that work? Um, because the whole thing is so vast and you might have seen like in videos and stuff like that, that you kind of lose track of which way's up and stuff like that so you've got just a little like a 3d mini map of of the actual galaxy okay. in the bottom left hand corner that you can kind of see where you are in it and which way you're orientated which gotcha. is just a it's just helpful we haven't shown it yet because it's quite it's quite ugly at the moment <laughs> okay so ben6724 is asking my favorite question of this entire podcast are there space whales space whales or any sort of creatures drifting in space i really like the idea of space whales uh mm -hmm. we have i don't know how he knows this but um like whenever we do a schedule uh somebody on the team there's a little in joke here that somebody on the team will always write down space whales oh wow on a post it <laughs> note and put that on the board just to try and sneak it in so I think maybe one day it'll accidentally get done just because somebody <laughs> will see it on their list and be like, right, I'll go implement those space whales. If the artist needs inspiration, they should look for the wind fish from Zelda Link's Awakening. It's oh, yeah. the best design. The, that's the real question. Will they be pilotable? Oh, my God. <laughs> Organic spaceships? God, there's got to be somebody you could ask. Who I would know. know the answer? <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Dusik is wondering, will every solar system have AI spaceships flying about, or are you sometimes really alone there? Uh, yeah, you can just sometimes be totally alone. Um, like we were uh, demoing at um, PSX behind closed doors, and we had like, you know, different parts of the press coming in and stuff like that, and we were just ourselves playing the build. And it's this really weird thing because you're like, flying through the galactic map and then you go hey i'll just demo to you that i can just jump anywhere and show you kind of any solar system and you would jump and like sometimes there's like pretty much nothing there and you're like oh not a very good demo but sometimes <laughs> it's really exciting sometimes you'll jump in and just you know be attacked by a, an inordinate amount of you know pirate ships and things like that uh, so yeah, it's a really difficult game to demo from that point of view. Sure. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it's, it's, you know, uh, kind of quite, quite empty. Sure. And yeah. So Hippo Lipolopagus is wondering <laughs> if you can cut your <laughs> engines in the game and just quietly drift through space. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. You can just go really slowly. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and he's also like. wondering: Is Xeno archaeology a thing in the game? Xeno archaeology. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, because it was a, a conversation on the plane on the way back as to whether we should, you know, have remains and things like that. Um, unconfirmed. Don't don't know. Okay. We'll see when the game comes out. Okay. Uh, Robert Hansen is wondering: When I reach the center of your universe and cross the event horizon. The game just goes black, right? Like The Sopranos? Because that would be scientific and artistic. I'm glad he, he would just be happy with that. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've said, like, there's something amazing when you get to the center, <laughs> the center of the universe. And I, I love the idea of, you know, <laughs> just, just fading to black. <laughs> like, just a well, big middle yeah. finger comes up on the screen. I think, as well. <laughs> hmm. Uh, so I'm curious, now that you guys have seen Interstellar, because the entire studio went to see it, right? Right. 
What do you guys think of that? Of that interpretation of a black hole? So the uh, am I allowed to say spoilers? I shouldn't say spoilers, right, for the film. Yeah, if you can be a little uh, vague about it, people know there's a black hole in it. Okay. Um, the the science of uh, Interstellar is not it's not the most scientific uh, film. You know, I they think. consulted Kip Thorne, the physicist, for the entire thing. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Not that you know. I'm sure you're smarter than Kip Thorne. <laughs> no pressure, Sean. <laughs> But it's uh yeah, it's a it's a bit of a weird film. I did like the black hole, like graphically, a lot of the stuff. The the not to be spoilers or whatever, but wasn't wasn't sure about the kind of uh the love dimension um, <laughs> sure. to, to to the scientific explanation. So not, the, so there's sure no love that. in No Man's Sky? Maybe that's just me. Am I like, you know, just cold and heartless maybe <laughs> you know sure sure well that that's fair all right we got a lot of questions to get through sean we got to keep going we can't okay, talk about love sorry, for hours I don't, I don't get all right uh viper 248 is asking will there be wormholes um well actually we kind of showed that right we showed like portling um and yeah that's that's kind of what those are okay sure uh luca d'angelo is asking can you get yourself in orbit around a planet um so uh, no no okay no. so there's no like gravitational pull to the planets then uh the thing about that is um <laughs> like to actually land on a planet with a ship is incredibly complicated in the real world um and like we don't want people to have to be actual real world physicists to be able to land kind of thing okay um so we don't we don't do that speaking of that uh elite dangerous just kind of came out and i hear landing and taking off is quite tricky have you guys gotten the chance to like just play around in it at all uh yeah i played the the alpha and the beta and i was one of the backers and stuff like that i love elite um and like i'm interested to see what people make of it because elite is it is as it was when i was a kid you know like docking in a space station is an achievement you know <laughs> and like it all just kind of came back to me like muscle memory um and i i didn't have a problem um but i'm interested to see what the like modern world makes of that because they haven't had to deal with that kind of stuff in a while Right. Um, but yeah, Elite was always actually a really, it was a really hard game. And it, it had that thing, which was like, you know, the size of space was really kind of representative of, of real world and our physical laws and things like that. So you have these wonderful moments where you're like, at your current speed to reach that space station that you can see right in front of you is going to take around two months, hmm. you know, and I love that. I love that. Uh, Nomad Sky isn't quite like that, uh, but I, I love that Elite is, you know? Sure. So Dog G6 asked a simple question, will there be rings around some planets? Um, yeah, we haven't shown that yet, um, but yeah. Okay. Like, I think that's a... If it's in sci-fi, and in sci-fi book covers, we kind of need to do it. <laughs> Mogi67 says, some of the atmospheric transitions that you've shown in the gameplay videos seem to be quite short. Will there be a variance in the depth of an atmosphere depending on the size of the planet? Yeah, it's actually like the, you know, it obviously varies with the speed that you're going in your ship and things like that. Like as to how you perceive that, if you think about our ships, they're going, they're going really quickly, you know, and that's one of the things that we wanted to do so that space felt quite traversable, you know, so that you're not trying to fly to a space station and, and spending like two weeks actually trying to get there or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we wanted it to feel like how it would be in a movie, I guess, you know, yeah. um, like how it would be in star Wars or something like that. Um, and so, you know, we, we tailor the speed to what will be fun from a gameplay point of view. 
you gotcha. know, sure. um, rather than what's maybe physically possible or whatever. Gotcha. Um, so that is what might give that impression, you know. Um, I think as well, we want like you to be able to fly from space down to a planet and back up in in a short space of time, you know, for that to be a really, you know, kind of quick turnaround so that you feel like space is yours to go out and explore, you know, and that just visiting one planet isn't a chore. It's something really instantaneous. Yeah. Cool. Uh, sanity is my vanity. Wants to know if you guys are going to be modeling brown or dark brown dwarfs or this is a science nerd, or does it stick with the main sequence stars of larger masses and temperatures? <laughs> uh, we have a whole bunch of different star types in there. Um, we're not trying to like model our exact universe. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make a kind of a sci-fi universe. Um, so we actually, we have things that don't exist in the real world. And we have some things that have like a correlation in the real world. I, I'm kind of inclined not to like give lists of every type of star and things like that. People are always asking me if you have like binary star systems and stuff like that. Right. I'd like people to just, you know, discover that themselves. If people really want to be like super into it, then they can watch back. Like one of our videos had like well, a bunch of them have had the galactic map in now. And as you're flying through, you'll notice that there are like sometimes different colors of star and stuff that you go past and different like star patterns and things. So people can pick that apart if they really want to. Gotcha. All right. We're moving on to planets now, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Passing the baton. There's categories. Yeah, exactly. So you've, you've passed the first round. Now things are going to be worth double the points. <laughs> so Wolverine 78 is asking, will there be planets composed completely from sand? like a dune planet or planets completely composed of liquid like water worlds uh like the incredible water world movie um <laughs> the uh uh yes is the answer yes all right I will keep it short yes okay dusk wants to know are there planetary maps and by that i i'm assuming he means like when you land on a surface is there a way to kind of scour where you're at or see where you've been that kind of thing yeah, I was think I was talking to you guys about this that uh you have again when you're on the planet you have a mini map. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we haven't really shown that yet cuz it's a little bit ugly and stuff, but um yeah, you have a map to find your way around, to find your way back to your ship. When you fly down to a planet, there are a load of like key points mm -hmm. marked on it. You don't know what they are if they haven't been discovered yet. Um but you you kind of use that as a way to to shortcut to things that might be interesting on a planet because it could be a little bit daunting to land on something and just kind of not know which direction to head in or right. where to go or whatever. All right. Cam Trees wants to know, I would love to know if there will be true Earth-like sized mountain ranges, canyons, and oceans. So far, it seems as though any mountains are more like hills, canyons are more like little ditches, and all the water I've seen is basically ponds or small lakes. Wow, that sounds almost insulting. <laughs> I, I just read it. I didn't come up with a question. <laughs> Is this secretly you, Ben? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I'd rather players find out on their own. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, there are there are big features, uh, but we actually have shown off a like bunch of big features as well already. Um, in some of the videos, there are some mountains and some really deep uh, oceans and things like that that I think are, I would argue, are certainly bigger than ponds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think he should have gone further. He should have been like, from what I've seen, you know, your oceans look more like small puddles. <laughs> <laughs> the size of a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> your, your mountains are no bigger than my bedroom. Uh, <laughs> All right, tooth decay, slightly less edgy question. Okay. <laughs> Can my ship go underwater? Um, at the moment, no. Uh, cuz it's a bit yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, so no, you you would crash into the water. 
All right. um, and so you'll have seen in some of the stuff we've shown, you'll see like crash ships underwater sometimes and things like that. Mm-hmm. I know we talked about this next one a little bit, but I think listeners would like to know the answer. Uh, Viper248 asks, is it possible to get to a point on a planet where you are stranded and can't get back to your ship, therefore resulting in having to kill yourself, meaning that we'll have to be careful and think about where we are landing? Uh, So at the moment, we kind of class that as a bug. If we let that happen, Mm -hmm. you have like a jetpack. You have, as you guys saw like some ability to deform the world and stuff like that. Um, at the moment, sometimes that happens and we're like, oh, we have to fix that. Um, but I think probably in the final game, some some really, you know, uh, kind of, I want to say annoying, annoying players because we'll consider it a bug. Uh, it would be frustrating for us to see that some people find some way to make that happen. Um, and we'll just be like, oh, God, we have to fix that now. <laughs> He's found himself stuck under the ocean somehow in a little cave or something like that that he can't get out. Um, but, yeah, like like with most games, we'd kind of consider that something we have to fix. Okay. But if they if if somebody would enjoy that, being mm-hmm. stuck <laughs> and not being able to get back to their ship, that possibility, then I'm I'm super happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dog G6 asks... Will there be dynamic slash timed weather effects such as sandstorms, hurricanes, acid storms, tsunamis? Tsunamis. There are no tsunamis. The others are okay. Um, the There are like weather effects and stuff. Mm-hmm. And again, that's been in some vids. I'm sure we've shown um, some kind of sandstorms. I think we've shown rain and kind of like really uh, misty planets and things like that. And those do kind of vary on mm-hmm. a planet but generally you'll you'll have a prevailing weather type on a planet like this is a decision we made that generally a planet will be kind of one biome in its entirety with some kind of variation within it um so that players can kind of say oh that's the ice planet mm-hmm. that's the kind of the the dune-esque planet rather than like what you would have on earth where earth contains so many different biomes and things like that um we wanted players to kind of be able to almost categorize it in their minds Mm -hmm. like if you watch uh like like any sci-fi film you'll tend to find that like star trek star wars planets are generally kind of really defined by one one type of environment type of thing um so we think that's cool it's quite nice when you find it kind of thing and it makes you want to go out and explore um and it's the same with weather generally you'll find this planet where it's raining but it just won't necessarily rain all the time 24 7 kind of thing you know that will kind of come and go but it will tend to be way more prevalent on that planet sanity is my vanity Again, asks, are there carnivorous plants? Uh, yes, there are. I don't think we've shown those yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you, you can have that. We had these. Uh, I, I remember one of the real early days of the game. Um, we had we were kind of implementing some of this stuff. And I was playing a build. And uh, we had these little plants. They're a bit like kind of like what you would see in do you remember them in Half Life? These things that would like whip out a tongue and then yeah. pull pull stuff down towards it. Um so we had these plants and then we had this like flock of birds uh that were just <laughs> wheeling around over the top. Um and I was unaware that these plants had like been introduced into the game. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just having a nice casual stroll, looking at the birds flying over this beach. <laughs> and these plants just like devoured these birds just straight out of the sky. <laughs> I thought I was losing my mind. Uh, yeah. So Krunin27 asks, so this is kind of along the same lines. Can I be eaten in one bite by a creature, tree, whatever? specifically one bite one bite clean bite <laughs> one, <laughs> one big om nom that sounded like is two that, bites quirk that's was okay. that predicated um. by 
and otherwise I'm not interested in this game. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Pre-order cancel. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, their finger is hovering over cancel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, could you be eaten by one bite? I guess you could be attacked mm-hmm. by other uh like creatures and things like that like i was saying um but yeah some of those will be able to kill you with with one hit Mm -hmm. how big can an animal be the person's asking this is secret system 99 by the way they want to know like godzilla and then they've typed a colon and a capital letter d and if you turn it sideways it's like a little happy face (laughs) (laughs) so can there be an animal the size of godzilla in no man's sky i can't remember how big godzilla is actually is oh, you know like in real terms like yeah. how let's google that <laughs> how, uh, how tall is he in real terms uh you can have really big creatures i'm not sure about godzilla mm-hmm. i haven't seen that yet um i would need a city i think for me i would only know if something was the size like godzilla always turns out to be exactly the size of a skyscraper mm-hmm. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's always it's really coincidental that you can he can just be the exact size of a, a skyscraper, uh, in whatever city he's attacking. The uh, uh, yeah, you can have like super big creatures. Um, Could you possibly see them from space? Is it conceivable they'd be that big? Um, I don't know. I've never seen that. Like you can see some of the buildings and stuff like that as like vague dot sometimes from space um like some of the kind of larger monuments and stuff like that and let's assume that godzilla is about the size of one of those sure (laughs) perfect so this question i feel somewhat vindicated actually sean this is from (laughs) f2yk34 which is, I promise you, not just a, an algorithm that generated that. <laughs> yeah. So this, that's what I'm beginning to think <laughs> is that these names have been procedurally generated. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a simple question this person asks. Will I be able to have a pet if I found a creature that can fit my spaceship and then is not too aggressive? And then they say, that leads me to another one. I'd like to have a zoo. Oh. And why does that make you feel vindicated? Because you... you Made it seem as though when I wanted to know about like cross pollinating planets, that it was the <laughs> dumbest thing you'd ever heard in your entire life. And this person wants to have a zoo, which I think is somewhat similar. It'd be like Superman's <laughs> uh, Fortress of Solitude zoo of like all kinds of interstellar. Yeah, like a trophy know. room. It's, yeah. I like Jeff that you're like, it's not just me. No, there it's are other gentle like... types out there. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So what's the answer, Sean? Um. No, you can't have pets at the moment. No pets. No, afraid not. And you can't take them in your ship. Like, you can, like, uh, I think I was, was I saying that to you? That you can, like, balance one on the <laughs> bonnet of your spaceship at the moment and take them into space? Perfect. But that's like, uh, I think that's a bug. We shouldn't allow that. <laughs> Perhaps oh. people will use that to create a zoo. Just mm-hmm. like, you know, slowly scoop animals up. <laughs> Poor unwitting animals into space. Would those animals explode? Slowly try and balance them towards the next planet. <laughs> Foist them into orbit around them. <laughs> oh, God. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so Colby Cheese 3 asks, if I kill a species, will it remain dead or will I go back and find that it has respawned? And then other people are asking like about mind areas, like if they will stay mined. So we were always saying that like, if you do something of significance, then we'll try and like share that, mm-hmm. right? Uh, if it's not that significant, we'll just save it locally. So if you like kill a bird, we scratch that off locally, and that bird is dead, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you shoot down another ship or something like that, you're you're taking that out of your system, but we don't feel the need to like, you know, broadcast that to to every single player or whatever but there are things of more significance that you can do so if you try and destroy an entire space station or something like that then that feels a lot more significant or take out a whole fleet or something like that um and so we always talked about doing that for creatures that like you could make an entire species extinct um and it's not that hard for us to implement it's just that when we looked at it like in practice it's pretty much impossible like because people just think oh (laughs) like 
I watched one of their videos or something like that. I saw a bunch of deer. I would kill all those deer. You know, <laughs> wipe out all those deer. Cool guy. Because some people think like that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, like, aren't thinking about an entire planet, like an Earth-sized planet, filled with deer and trying to track down every single one of them, you know? Um, well, what if one of those like deer that. killed your father? And then you're really motivated to take out everyone. Well, I think that would make for a particular kind of, you know, particularly kind of emotional video mm. where you you literally you go and try and wipe out this entire species of deer <laughs> just because one of them somehow <laughs> killed your father. I'm not sure how what game you think we're playing, but one of them <laughs> killed your father. And you were like, imagine, you know, like we're talking, you know thousands tens of thousands of these creatures and i like to imagine you ben uh-huh you know being down to the last deer <laughs> right like you <laughs> and it's the size of a godzilla <laughs> you know he's out there somewhere he's in a cave somewhere you're slowly tracking it down <laughs> <laughs> this game sounds fun sean <laughs> you you kill him and then you find oh, he's got a child <laughs> <laughs> oh and then you're the mo- you're the real monster. Oh god! Then I have to look myself in the mirror, wonder who I've become. <laughs> All right, I have one last question before I pass it off to Brian Vore. This is from Uncompetitive. This is simple. Will it have cities? Um, no, we're not like. Oh, this is one of those annoying things because I want like. I don't want to classify exactly how many different structures you can see and how big and things like that because I want people to discover that. Um, but like, I want to also make sure that people know the type of game we're making. Mm-hmm. So like, with cities, with that question, I always think of like Star Wars, right? The first three Star Wars films are that kind of iconic sci-fi look that, that we really want to go for, um, you know, that is kind of that that lone explorer out on the edge of space. I think of like Luke on Tatooine or something like that. Like Tatooine for me is like the perfect kind of sci-fi planet. Um, and then I think of the later three films where it's more like, as in the more recent three films where it's more like cities and the Senate and stuff like that. Um, and they feel less sci-fi to me and more like our current world, you mm-hmm. know. And cities for me just gets into that whole area of like, it's almost like GTA or something like that, you know, is the kind of gameplay that I expect in that. Um, and so we wanted to stay away from this. That That's more what we're trying to do is like the, uh, the kind of unexplored frontier, you know, you are on the edge of known space. Um, and that's, that's, I guess the feel that we're going for, um, and less kind of urban, uh, I guess, you know, I just picture like whenever somebody says city to me, I just picture some sort of like futuristic, uh, graffiti based mini game or something like that. (laughs) Um, so yeah, we're kind of trying to stay, stay away from that area. Gotcha. All right. Um, we're kind of shifting a little bit to more kind of gameplay stuff. Um, okay. Uh, Krunen27 wants to know the coolest way that you have personally died in the game, which you've probably played it more than anyone else at this point. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, so, okay, I can give you an example from recently of uh, your suit has like different kind of ratings for how long it can survive in certain different kind of environments and how long it can survive underwater and things like that. Um, so there's this, uh, like this thing that happens every now and then in that you will have something marked on your map, um, that you don't know what it is. Um, but you sometimes won't be able to get there. So, for instance, with me recently, there's, I found this ocean, basically, you know, perhaps 
perhaps you might call it a pond, but I would. <laughs> <laughs> is far larger than that um and so it's really deep and so i couldn't with my suit actually reach down to the bottom but as it happened the way the systems are generated there's something marked on my map under this ocean um and like i could scan and so i could see that there was something down there but i couldn't like the distance such that I couldn't make out what it was it's quite like dark down there um and so i made a dive basically um down to try and see what it was and and drowned on my way and so now i've lost where that was um and i guess i'll never know and so that was a that was a weird thing from recently where I, i'm kind of i kind of feel annoyed because you know i'm working on the game and making the game and the game is like holding out on me <laughs> <laughs> as secrets you know <laughs> What uh, what do you think it would would have been down there? It would just be like some resources, or like you think maybe like a a crashed big ship or something that's that's uh, maybe full of loot or something? Or what are it your could theories? Also be like a creature that I haven't seen before. That's oh. the thing that would kind of do it for me, if you know what I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so it, it's kind of yeah, it's it's weird because you just don't often get stuff down that deep. Um, and so I, I'm like, I'm curious to know what the system would have created, you know? Hmm. Well, uh, Deathstroke Rises wants to know if we'll be able to create, establish our own bases or homes on a planet, something for us to come back to. Um, yeah, like, at, uh, kind of when the game releases, the core of the game is that, that journey to the center of the galaxy, um, or to like and that's kind of a big a big draw i think for most players um and so the game isn't really about setting up your base or setting up your home world or starting a shop or something like that um for the vast majority of players the way they'll be playing it is to uh kind of go on that that voyage um i'm really interested to see when it comes out though whether some players don't want to do that i think that will be interesting like whether some players boot up on the very first planet that they start up on and they just decide to explore that planet in full and do nothing else you know or whether they like find a nice little trade route halfway towards the center and decide that that's that's their trade route you know and that they're <laughs> they're making a killing there and they just don't ever want to leave kind of <laughs> thing um you know, and I think in a way we sort of failed somehow if some people don't want to do that, even though I won't really understand those people fully. If you know what I mean, I'll be like, why, why, why are you doing this? We've built this whole universe out there for you to explore and you just want to stay here. But I think it'll be, you know, it'll be a good sign that people are happy with just one one part of it you know what i mean definitely yeah yeah like that somebody like it just goes like i love this landscape or i you know whatever yeah i just want to know everything about this one planet or this one system or whatever i think that'll be really cool so sean guy one two three four which i think <laughs> is an homage to you he's <laughs> on sure. your team uh he and wants to know if you can sprint if you could sprint in the game yeah um, and in everything that we've shown so far, you're pretty much always walking. Um, and, but you can run, you know, and again, that's down to your suit and stuff. Um, yeah, but like, I think, I think that's something that I would think watching what we've shown in the game so far that people might think, oh, you're not moving very fast. Like I would hmm. think that. <laughs> I'd be like, that'd be a little bit frustrating uh but it's you know you are a lot freer than we've showed like we haven't showed uh that you have a jet pack and stuff as well and that you can kind of you're reasonably agile hmm. bangarang wants to know if you can fly your ship in third person view uh this is a discussion that happens like all the time on the team um you know and i think i was saying this to you guys like when the game comes out there are certain desired decisions that maybe, you know, even in kind of alpha testing and stuff like that, maybe people will feed back to us on. 
um, like at the moment you are always in, in first person, you know, and we tried when you go into warp, we tried you going into third person and we, we didn't really, we didn't really like it. We might go back to it, but, um, we decided to keep you in first person. Um, so yeah, you're always in first person at the moment and maybe some people will find that weird and maybe we'll add that option but at the moment yeah it's always first person hmm. well uh sanity in my vanity once again <laughs> is back uh he wants to know if you can name your ship um you like ships are actually a discovery just like everything else um and you can name your discovery so you can name the ship type and then everyone who has that ship would have that name Hmm. It would have that name. So when they first find it and they get in it. But if you're the first person to find that type of ship, then it's yours to name. Cool. I think I'm just thinking of all, immediately thought of like as many inappropriate ship names as I possibly could. Right. They're all pretty phallic <laughs> to begin with. So. <laughs> um, this, is, this is how your brain works. Maybe this is one of those things that we, you know, again, we learned is a terrible idea. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm sure it can be scaled back somehow. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, dusk dusk I think is how you would say it. Uh, asks if you see another spaceship, can you scan it and see its stats? Uh, to see its stats, no. It's actually only when you see it on like in a space station or a trade post, mm -hmm. uh, then you can go up to it and see its stats. Okay, okay. Zach wants to know <laughs> how big the interiors of the space stations are. Like, are they more than the kind of tunnel you, that you've shown on trailers of, of ships flying out? Okay. Um, yeah, there's space at the back of that, that, like, behind that tunnel that we showed that you can, um, that you can access, that you can go back to. Um, and... There's like the space stations themselves are quite huge, but inside there's not a huge amount for you to do. It's really about kind of trading and like looking at other ships and the other ships that are there. In some ways, I kind of think of them and, and this maybe sounds bad, but I think of them as like a ship showroom, like that this is a place for you to kind of see and sample all the different types of ships that might be docked there and kind of think, oh, once I save up a little more, this is the kind of ship I want to get. And it's actually quite fun, I find at least, to just like stand there sometimes and just watch ships going out and coming in and occasionally something really, really cool will come in and you'll be like, oh, wow. You know, one day when I have enough money, I want that kind of ship. Definitely. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, Prack uh, has seen some of the big battle scenes in the trailers and wants to know how it's possible for your single ship to survive and compete against a big armada like that. Um, so the freighters are generally like armed reasonably well. So you'll see like a big fleet like that. Um, and in order to take them out first, you would have to have a really like quite advanced ship with like really good weapons, um, just in order for you to survive and partake, but you generally wouldn't be able to take it out on your own, you know? So you're normally joining in to an attack that's taking place or initiating it, um, and expecting other ships to join in, but you're not, you know, on your own you're kind of, he's right, you're not, um, you're not best equipped to, to take out a whole fleet of freighters, you know. Um, but playing as a pirate, you'll generally say, take out a few kind of smaller dropships that might be doing trading. They're about the kind of same size as you. And then you'll slowly build up your ship. And sometimes you'll do kind of really brave runs and take out kind of a, you know, what are the smaller freighters yourself? Um, 
but once you kind of build your ship up enough then you can at least survive um kind of a battle with some of the larger freighters but you never get so big that you just think that you can take on a fleet gotcha hmm. Hmm. wolf star strider wants to know uh how factions are distributed are they do they have kind of their own turf and you like kind of wander into it or are they just kind of peppered throughout the galaxy kind of evenly and you just never know when you're going to run to them uh it's it's more like they have their own turf like let's call it that right they uh the galactic map is divided up into regions um and you get a sense of that as you're flying through you get a sense of the different colors and things of like that and that represents um actually the types of resources and stuff at the moment um but you can actually see regions and they have like names and things of like that um and like kind of like you would always see in sci-fi that uh, they would talk about different quadrants and stuff like that of the galaxy um we have kind of reasonably small divisions and within those you tend to get a like a different kind of faction um and yeah so as you're flying through you'll be coming across different ones um but it's not like you would uh, attack one in one system and then fly on you know hundreds of systems more and then and then only come across them again then you know you tend to be in in an area for quite a while mm -hmm. where it's against a certain faction gotcha all right sean we have some rapid fire tech questions for you okay a lot of people are asking if it's conceivable to play this game offline uh yes yeah you there we go perfect <laughs> shadow wolf <laughs> 4099 is asking if it's possible, as stupid as it may sound, he points out, to shrink this tech down to one world and basically make an Elder Scrolls style game with more variety on one planet. Oh, man. Uh, I would. Uh, I can't give a short answer to that. <laughs> uh, I personally think that that's like so exciting. Right. Like, I would. Uh, I would love to, you know, not right now, obviously, uh, one day work on like an RPG and, and take the levels of variety that we have and think about what that would be like all condensed down, not just to a planet, but to like, you know, let's say, you know, a couple of kilometers squared and just have all of that variety condensed down to that. So to think about, um, you know, a kind of a procedural RPG within a within a quite a dense space, I think, would be so so interesting. But yeah, that's, I, I can't that's imagine just anybody's going to be interested thing. in that. So yeah, don't don't even bother. Yeah, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of people are asking if there's a significance uh, behind the logo. Uh, yes, the atlas. Um, we haven't really like said what it is but it's definitely a thing that you come across in game okay interesting uh a lot of people are also asking um if the pop-in that you can see in some of the trailers do you think it's going to be reduced for the final game or is that just a byproduct of the procedural generation uh, how dare they? i'm sorry uh, look it's the internet it's cruel <laughs> <laughs> um it's it's not pop-in it's fading in i think you'll find uh no um the the nature is that it's obviously generated all around you. Um, I personally am a little unhappy with, you know, what we've showed so far in terms of it being something that you do notice at times. Um, I think it's something that you're when you're walking around the planet, you just never see pretty much. Uh, when you're flying into a planet, you never see it. But then as you're flying over the surface of a planet, you sometimes notice it at the moment, mm -hmm. um, and that's something that we'll definitely reduce. But it's a kind of a, a a there is to some extent, uh, like it's part of the the tech in some ways that things are being generated around you. But it's really about like how close to you they're being generated and stuff. Okay. Um, I normally wouldn't ask this type of question, but since you guys sent me the footage at 60 frames a second, Squishy wants to know if there's a targeted frame rate that you're shooting for. 
Uh, are you guys uh, gunning for 60? So every game I've like ever worked on so far has been 60. Um, and so we, we will tend to aim for that. Um, you know, that's, I'm not promising anyone that it will be, but that's definitely what we're aiming for. You know, we okay. tend to make something that's quite, uh, like, uh, I say, uh, console and stuff like that, you know, because that's, we want that arcadiness, you know, that kind of immediacy, um, that like a super fluid frame rate gives and stuff. Sure. So I don't mean that like, I don't mean that as console compared to PC or whatever, but I not I like a really solid, you know, good frame rate kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're definitely it's something we care a lot about. Gotcha. Alex the Pixel Punk wants to know if you guys are considering a physical release of the game for the PS4. Yeah. Uh like lots of people have asked about that and I guess we've never said whether it would be digital or physical i guess right now we're like we're an indie studio so we would assume that it will just be digital but you kind of never you never know do you think it's possible sony would help out on that front um yeah i think you know something that i'm still trying to come to grips with is that i guess we're like a a reasonable sized title for 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 console now and stuff like that you know hey we're on the cover of game informer hey congratulations <laughs> yeah. um so like we'll see you know we just kind of we tend to not even think about stuff like that to be sure. honest gotcha um erg to wants to know if there's any chance this game will ever come to xbox one. Oh god what a question sorry um, a heart attack i guess we're you know we're not allowed to talk about stuff like that, I guess. Okay. Okay. Uh, La Palba is wondering, with the current build of No Man's Sky, is the hardware still capable of added features, mechanics, and base models in the future? Or are you stretching the feasibility of modern hardware with this game? Oh, uh, like, I think we're... Uh, like, you guys know this from talking to me. Like, I look at the game and I think it looks horrible it could look so much better you know i think there's so much more that we could do um like i don't think we will uh like necessarily achieve everything we want with no man's sky mm -hmm. you know but there's uh like people have to know like we're we're a super small team there's so much more that could be done definitely a lot of people were uh asking about like a building module as well could that possibly ever be inserted into the game I think I'd really like to do that thing which uh like a lot of games have recently like where the game releases hopefully the core of it is incredibly fun um but that you know we get the opportunity that enough people play it and buy it and stuff like that that we we get the chance to kind of embellish that and build on that and Definitely. kind of take it in different directions and I think that would be kind of up to the community, you know, what kind of stuff they wanted to see. Something that stands out to me on that front is during the procedural generation kind of long demo video that we posted, you mentioned just how chaotic the world is. And if you change one aspect, everything else will change and that it doesn't matter yeah. now because it's before release. But with add-ons and kind of updating the game after the release, is it going to change everything then? Or how do you balance that out? It won't be... Um like what people would term as DLC. You know, it's not like we're going to say, um, there are now two new creature types, you right. know, um, because that's weird to me. We already have the universe and hopefully the universe is like varied enough. You know, it will be more about new features, you know, kind of like you would say, you would see in like Daisy or, um, you know, Terraria or Starbound or whatever, where they're generally adding kind of features to the game. So more things that the player can do, more ways that they can interact with the world and stuff like that. I think that's the that's the area that really interests me. And so those are the non-chaotic elements then? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, a lot of people are asking about the release date, and you guys have just said 2015, correct? Yeah, yeah. 
will it be warmer or colder when this game is released? <laughs> In which country? <laughs> well, I'll we'll leave that up to the players to figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm probably not allowed to say, I think. Okay. But you guys have a fair amount of work to do. Um, Like, I think we're probably actually just going to go quite quiet now, you know? Sure. Like, in terms of... This last month's been a bit crazy. We did, you know, we hadn't done much for about six months before, but then we did TGAs and PSX and uh, Game Informer and stuff like that. Like, that's a really big month for a small studio. Um, and I, like, <laughs> I find it I find it particularly weird, you know? Like, uh, like I was saying to you, just, you know, seeing my... my stupid little face made into animated gifs and things like that <laughs> um so i'm i'm quite looking forward to just going back to my little cave uh go back to the office and and getting back to programming and and finishing the game you know yeah um and i don't really want to say how long we think that's going to take um but that's kind of what next year is about for me you know um it's like i'm looking forward to new year and just focusing on development and not uh you know even though i love you guys uh like talking to uh you know lovely people like yourselves uh because it's not really what i'm good at like i would much prefer to be back Should programming you- and stuff and then kind of the next time that people see us probably hopefully the the game's out Definitely. Just so you know, so many of the questions were, can I hug Sean? Is Sean single? <laughs> People really like hearing you talk. Just to boost your ego a little bit. Just bring... towards the closest <laughs> star you will just go for for a very very long time so <laughs> that's why we haven't done it gotcha. but it does work sure sure it, w Kui chen is wondering will there be a favorites list of planets because he'd hate to find a beautiful planet and then just lose track of it completely uh yeah we're gonna have that galactic map that we showed for a little bit we'll have like waypoints and stuff that you would kind of expect with a map there's also 
a mini map for the galactic map that we haven't shown yet. Huh. How does that work? Um, because the whole thing is so vast and you might have seen like in videos and stuff like that, that you kind of lose track of which way's up and stuff like that. So you've got just a little like a 3d mini map of, of the actual galaxy okay. in the bottom left hand corner that you can kind of see where you are in it and which way you're orientated. Gotcha. It's just a, it's just helpful. We haven't shown it yet cause it's quite, it's quite ugly at the moment. <laughs> okay. So Ben6724 is asking my favorite question of this entire podcast. Are there space whales? Space whales? Or any sort of creatures drifting in space? I really like the idea of space whales. Uh, <laughs> we have, I don't know how he knows this, but um, like whenever we do a schedule, uh, somebody on the team, there's a little in joke here, that somebody on the team will always write down space whales oh, wow. on a post-it <laughs> note and put that on the board just to try and sneak it in. So I think maybe one day it'll accidentally get done just because somebody <laughs> will see it on their list and be like, right, I'll go implement those space whales. If the artist needs inspiration, they should look for the windfish from Zelda Link's Awakening. It's oh, yeah. the best design. The, that's the real question. Will they be pilotable? Oh my God! <laughs> Organic spaceships. God, there's got to be somebody you could ask. Who I would know, know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Dusik is wondering: Will every solar system have AI spaceships flying about, or are you sometimes really alone there? Uh, yeah, you can just sometimes be totally alone. Um, like we were uh, demoing at um, PSX behind closed doors, and we had like you know different parts of the press coming in and stuff like that and we were just ourselves playing the build and it's this really weird thing because you're like flying through the galactic map and then you go hey i'll just demo to you that i can just jump anywhere and show you kind of any solar system and you would jump and like sometimes there's like pretty much nothing there and you're like oh not a very good demo but sometimes <laughs> it's really exciting sometimes you'll jump in and just you know be attacked by a, an inordinate amount of you know pirate ships and things like that uh, so yeah it's a really difficult game to demo from that point of view sure. uh, but yeah sometimes it's it's you know uh kind of quite quite empty sure and yeah so hippo lipolopagus is wondering if you can cut your engines in the game and just quietly drift through space. Uh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. You can just go really slowly. Uh, yeah. Okay. If, and if he's also like. wondering: Is Xeno archaeology a thing in the game? Xeno archaeology. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, because it was a a conversation on the plane on the way back as to whether we should you know, have remains and things like that. Um, unconfirmed. Don't, don't know. Okay. We'll see when the game comes out. Okay. Uh, Robert Hansen is wondering, when I reach the center of your universe and cross the event horizon, the game just goes black, right? Like the Sopranos? Because that would be scientific and artistic. I'm glad he, he would just be happy with that. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've said, like, there's something amazing when you get to the center <laughs> the center of the universe and i i love the idea of you know <laughs> just just fading to black <laughs> big, like, just a well, big middle yeah. finger comes up on the screen I think, as well. <laughs> hmm. uh so i'm curious now that you guys have seen interstellar because the entire studio went to see it right right what do you guys think of that of that interpretation of a black hole so the uh, uh, am i allowed to say spoilers i shouldn't say spoilers right for the film yeah, if you can be a little uh, vague about it. People know there's a black hole in it. Okay. Um the the science of uh Interstellar is not it's not the most scientific uh film. You know I they think. consulted Kip Thorne, the physicist for the entire thing. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Not that, you know, I'm sure you're smarter than Kip Thorne. <laughs> no pressure, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> but it's uh yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a weird film. I did like the black hole, like graphically, a lot of the stuff. The the not to be spoilers or whatever, but wasn't wasn't sure about the kind of uh, the love dimension. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Don't 
starting out, Cobra TV is asking, because there's been, the way you guys have worded it has kind of bounced back and forth. And so he's looking for a simple clarification. Is this a universe that you're building for your game, or is it just one galaxy? It's a universe. Why do you um, make that distinction? It's it's actually uh, Alex, who works here, who changed the text for some reason on our um, on our website to say <laughs> a uh, an infinite galaxy rather than infinite universe. I don't really know why he did that, but it caused some sort of like vague controversy. Uh, but it's, it's a universe. People don't seem to know the difference. We have joked that since people picked up on that, that we were going to every week just make it a little bit smaller. You know, so like next week we'd just say solar system. <laughs> and we go to be like planet and then like small house. <laughs> So, but eventually, there's... just like one level. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the you know the mystery and the glowing areas that's towards the center of the galaxy. So you can't leave that galaxy. So why call it a universe then? Well, let's let's not uh, spoil things for people. Uh, you start out in a same galaxy as everyone else. Okay. Um, when you begin, but. Uh, there are, we've said before, there is more than one galaxy. Interesting. Okay. Uh, moving on. Alan says, uh, it's been said that your first ship has terrible range. I assume this is just for jumps. Could you potentially manually fly to new solar systems? Um, yes, uh, but nobody's actually done it yet. It takes like an inordinate amount of time, like a really, really long time. Are we talking years? Uh, I don't actually know. It's a huge distance. Uh, it depends on the star system. Some are quite close together, but still, you know, a ridiculous distance compared to how far planets are apart from each other. So none of us have taken the time. Uh, we could probably work out what the average is. Sure. Uh, but I like the idea of just releasing it and some somebody somebody will try it gotcha, gotcha like the problem is if you head in the wrong you're you're aiming for quite a small spot in the overall <laughs> scale of space <laughs> so if you head in the wrong direction you will just you know which 99 percent of the directions in a 3d space <laughs> to, to, to the scientific explanation so, not, the, so there's sure no love and no man's sky maybe that's just me am i like you know just cold and heartless maybe <laughs> you know sure sure well that that's fair all right we got a lot of questions to get through sean we got to keep going we can't okay, talk about love sorry, for hours I don't, I don't get all right uh viper 248 is asking will there be wormholes um well actually we kind of showed that right we showed like portling um and yeah that's that's kind of what those are okay sure uh luca d'angelo is asking can you get yourself in orbit around a planet um, so, uh, no, no. Okay, no. so there's no, like, gravitational pull to the planets then? Uh, the thing about that is, um, <laughs> like, to actually land on a planet with a ship is incredibly complicated in the real world. Um, and, like, we don't want people to have to be actual real world physicists to be able to land kind of thing okay um so we don't we don't do that speaking of that uh elite dangerous just kind of came out and i hear landing and taking off is quite tricky have you guys gotten the chance to like just play around in it at all uh yeah i played the the alpha and the beta and i was one of the backers and stuff like that i love elite um and like i'm interested to see what people make of it because elite is it is as it was when i was a kid you know like docking in a space station is an achievement you know <laughs> and like it all just kind of came back to me like muscle memory um, and i i didn't have a problem um but i'm interested to see what the like modern world makes of that because they haven't had to deal with that kind of stuff in a while Right. Um, but yeah, Elite was always actually a really, it was a really hard game. And it, it had that thing, which was like, you know, the size of space was really kind of representative of, of 
real world and our physical laws and things like that. So you have these wonderful moments where you're like at your current speed to reach that space station that you can see right in front of you is going to take around two months, you hmm. know, and I love that. I love that. Uh, no bad sky isn't quite like that. Um, but I, I love that elite is battles to be fun. Treasures unknown. The universe you wouldn't.